Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today we look at how exactly SDS drills work to make holes in stone and concrete using a 10,000 frames per second camera to slow things down and find that maybe it doesn't drill at all. We compare two one inch capacity cordless SDS drills, one that costs around twice as much as the other and find out if that results in faster hole making, more torque, different designs internally. How did they compare in just hammering impacting force, like precisely? and versus larger SDS hammer drills. And finally, how does that all stack up to the performance you'd get from the hammer function on your current cordless drill driver? Because honestly, we just wanted to know and see how this all works in high speed. Can you blame us? We bought this Milwaukee 2912 cordless SDS plus hammer drill, and it costs around 350 bucks. According to the brand, it delivers two pounds of impact energy, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I guess is useful if all the brands use the same metric. And it's also a drill maxing out at 1330 RPM. And this is the Ryobi HP P223, also a brushless one inch capacity SDS plus rotary hammer drill, also made by TTI like that Milwaukee, except this one's $189, close to half the price. But maybe that's due to less performance, 1250 RPM, and 2.1 joules of impacting force. And there we go again with unshared units. That converts to 1.55 foot-pounds of force compared to the M18's two pounds. But still doesn't mean all that much to us, so maybe you too. Let's take a look at these two tools and how these things work, then we'll see how they compare in performance. These tools come apart much like traditional cordless drills do, except for maybe a good extra helping of mass and metal pieces and places. Inside this lower area houses a rather large brushless motor, and that's about it. All the action happens further up top in this housing here, where you'll find a die-cast aluminum housing, assembling a pairing of a piston and a transmission of sorts. This gear selector on the side slots that transmission forward and backwards to select between drilling, hammer drilling, and just hammering. And to see how all that works, we're going to have to employ our usual blind surgeon technique of making a window in one of these so that we can take a peek and also see what happens when this thing's operating with our high-speed camera with later shots. This is of course performed after the concrete drilling testing you're gonna be seeing. So after melting out all the grease out of this thing that Milwaukee has like five times the grease the Ryobi did inside, what we're looking at here is just drilling, mainly rotational torque going on. Some cam movement here back and forth, but that's just from the bearing friction causing this thing to rotate, but no real piston hammering. And this is hammer drilling, the rotation and cam oscillation being directly clocked together and each scaling together with more RPM. Since this piston here is working inside of a cylinder, you don't really get to check out what's going on. So this is how all of that works. With all the gears meshed, this cam which rides in a slot is wobbled back and forth and contrary to what many people believe, actually moves a hollow cylinder back and forth, not the hammering bit or piston which is called a striker in this case. It's basically an air piston inside. So that striker piston is actually in here, caked in grease to keep it sealed and moving. The cylinder is down here indexed on the post coming off of that cam and that cam is called a wobble shaft, and it throws that cylinder forward, compresses the air behind the floating striker piston, which then throws that forward into the anvil, and the anvil is the thing doing the hitting on your SDS bit. This disconnect makes for less felt vibration that pairs with the handle disconnect here, just a lack of interconnecting on the handle. The top of the handle is attached into a slotted hole that allows for a movement without translating all of that back and forth motion into your hand and the handle itself. And that's the same on both models. Matter of fact, the internals, even the parts diagrams and descriptions look nearly unchanged between these two tools. And this here showing you hammering action without the gears meshing for just strictly hammering action, no rotation. That wobble cam pushing the slot on the cylinder back and forth by itself. I think it's time we measure the performance differences between these two tools, if there is one. This is peak torque, which will be measured using our drill dyno brake. If 50 foot pounds is put into the brake assembly, 50 pounds of force is measured one foot away from the center axis, and that's whether it's moving or not using the free floating rotating brake caliper. And while I personally know of some people who have opted for big SDS drills due to their impressive size for tough drilling tasks, you wouldn't call these torque monsters per se. The Ryobi putting up here just 10 and a half foot pounds of torque. For reference, their own hammer drill driver puts up 16.2 foot pounds and even up to 21.6 with a bigger battery like this SDS got. Here's how the Milwaukee does. Ah. 
11.2 foot pounds. Yeah, about the same or close enough. And that's regardless of battery selection as well on these tools. And considering an M18 drill does 35 plus foot pounds here, yeah, these big guys are not torque animals. The Rio in particular, not even enjoying the spin up process on this dyno and kept cutting out. And that's because, and the torque readings included due to this, the lack of significant gear reduction drills and impacts as well use planetary gear sets to greatly reduce high RPM motors down to low RPM torquey outputs. While an SDS is only really seeing a gear transfer at the pinion here and then some standard gear on gear reduction here, nowhere near what a planetary does. So are all these tools basically interchangeable then? Let's get to the brass tacks of things and find out by doing some timed runs, then dive into some sweet high speed footage. We have some anchors to set, so let's see who would get the job done faster here. The bright lights you'll see come on and off are for shooting the massively high frame rates that our other camera uses. Here's the M18 drilling a 5 8 hole, larger sizes coming up. Seven point one seconds. It also drilled into a second hole in seven point six seconds. This feels like a very simple task for this tool. Very little drama and relatively low noise as well. Here's the Ryobi. Nine point five seconds here and using a new bit made no gains either, this run seeing 9.7 seconds. And slowed way, way down, we can see exactly how a drill somehow makes holes in concrete. The tip of this drill bit is not like a traditional twist drill. Instead of a full length of high speed steel or cobalt, it's a centered carbide wedge, or essentially a tip that's brazed into a nothing fancy alloy steel flute down the length of the bit. Sweet to watch, I think. As the bit moves further into a tunnel of its own making, you can see it start to jostle around left and right as it struggles to stay centered and not interact with the walls of the hole with each impacting blow. And yet up top, in the insides of this tool, as we later filmed, it's all business as usual. This working away at a large rock at the moment, unfazed. The anvil inside working back and forth, as you see from the release trucks movement here, this footage still clear enough to see the DeWalt brand model number and Germany country of origin on the bit. That's pretty cool. And here's a head to head drilling a bigger task, a 7 8 hole near their capacity into, well all the way through a rather thick 50 year old garage slab. Excuse the angle, I noticed the first test was drilled at an angle and had to match it with the others just to be able to compare. The Milwaukee takes an early lead on this one and just sort of keeps it. For an SDS plus tool, not a max, it is sort of a beast in this 7 8 size. The size range and depth making this difference between the two tools stand out a bit more here, eventually finishing at what would be 23.1 seconds to the Ryobi's later finishing 28.2. Not a lifetime difference, but also 20% more performance in tools is often significant. So what's going on here? Similar internal design, makes near the same torque, same parent company, and yet measurable gap in performance. Well, and the Ryobi start process reminds me of this even more. These tools work a lot like the drill on the Mars Curiosity rover. Credit to Dustin over at Smarter Every Day. Take a listen. What's this right here? What do you have? This is a drill bit assembly. Okay. Uh, this is not only our, our drill bit, which uh, if you take a close look, this is a masonry bit. It's it's not like the, the cutting bits that, that you have on, on your handheld uh, carpentry drill. It's, it's more of a chisel. And notice he says chisel there. And basically what we're doing is chiseling little, uh, little divots to, to carve out an asterisk shape. It's not the rotation that's really cutting the rock so much, it's, it's really the, the hammering action. 
powder, and then the rotation that we do is, is mainly for drying the powder up through the sheet. And it may seem obvious to you looking at our footage, or obvious on its face in this topic in general, but there really doesn't seem to be any real drilling going on here in the first place. On the Milwaukee versus this large stone, look at how much progress happens at the start here before the hammering. Essentially, none. Then the shock wave travels down the tool, bit, and stone surface, and away we go. If you look at many of the used definitions of a drill and a drill bit, this isn't really it. It's more like a mason with a hammer and chisel. The rotating quote unquote drilling part of an SDS hammer drill is just repositioning that chisel very quickly, angularly about the center axis so that it's accurate and where you want it to be in order to drop an anchor in or something else. Now, once you're chiseling at the surface, but that work surface becomes sort of at a depth into something, the rest of the rotational drilling function of an SDS tool performs its second task to basically act as an auger to shovel those chips and dust and powder up out of the hole. Much of the untraditional looking paddle shaped tip on the SDS concrete bit is just for flinging this stuff out of the way to clean and reposition the carbide chisel. Instead of scraping and cutting shavings and using the tip of the drill bit to tear away at those chips like a traditional drill bit, it's really just hammering, flinging dust away and repositioning. And it's sort of genius. It's like a really fast, talented stonemason chiseling like a clock hand turns on a clock face. To further reinforce this idea, let's take a look at a tool that does have higher RPM, it has more torque, a hammer drill driver to see what differences we can find. Here's a DeWalt DCD 999, their top hammer drill driver doing that same 5 8 hole. So down to the same depth, this took a full 16 seconds, around twice as long and a whole lot louder and more annoying. Jeez. And here's what that looks like slowed way, way down. Now the hammering mechanism on a drill driver like this one is quite a bit different. The internals are more like rotating over a bumpy road than what the SDS does. And that results in more often blows per minute, 38,000 now, but each of those bringing with it much less force as well. It gets the job done, but slower as we can see here. Definitely doing a good job of flinging that debris away with its higher RPM, but not making much progress per turn or per hit. This does look to make a cleaner, maybe more polished sides on a hole at the end of the day. So if you have multiple options and maybe a thinner slab to punch through, choosing the biggest tool on the block could have some downsides after all. But on the topic of power, it does seem like the guy with the bigger hammer and the more often he can hit it is going to get more done in a certain amount of time. All other attributes from an SDS are sort of just along for the ride. So let's find out by giving our old air hammer dyno a go. This measures how much power and work an air hammer does in a given amount of time. And while there aren't any cordless air hammers yet, these and cordless jack hammers are about as close as it gets so far. And they do drive an air piston, just requiring a lot more bits than an air hammer to make that happen. So let's do some measurements, and then we'll provide several comparisons to make sense of it. Here's the Ryobi. Twelve hundred and ninety-eight PSI, about thirteen hundred. Now that doesn't mean all that much by itself. So here's the Milwaukee using a forged battery instead of the twelve now, but. Even an XC 5.0 does about as much hammering. These pretty much hit the same numbers, no matter what, each time. Seventeen hundred and sixty-eight psi. This is where we see the main measurable distance that corresponds with what we're seeing on concrete. For reference, that's around what a cheap short barrel air hammer does, which are also often used for similar chipping and tile scraping tasks an SDS can do in its hammer mode. And for further comparison, here's a 1 in 916 capacity SDS Max Milwaukee, which reaches all the way up to 4,216 PSI for about 550 bucks. 
matching but not breaking any records among a long barrel class of 401 shank air hammer. So this is a useful comparison between those two and hammer power, which is, as we've tested before, even on smaller SDS tools, it does seem to correlate with drilling speed like we saw today. Because the tool's more chiseling and sweeping than actually doing any cutting drilling that would need a ton more behind that spinning action. And the anti-vibration technology does seem to work, though between the two Ryobi and Milwaukee tools, they seem to work exactly the same, even though the brands might call them different things in their marketing. We always have a lot of fun when we get to take tools apart and shoot footage like this to learn more about how they work and why the heck not compare some tool brands along the way. We make episodes every Friday. Click subscribe to be sometimes shown those. Thanks for watching.